Hi guys, this is jsnall.com and I'm here with a review of the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G, the cheapest 5G phone that Samsung has to offer on the market right now. There's also an A22 5G, but that one has yet to reach the global market. So the Galaxy A32 5G changes the design at the backside, not opting for a camera island, and it arrives at only $200 to bring you the 5G technology. It has a quad bell camera and it was launched in early 2021 as early as january if i'm being totally honest it's got a big battery accounting for the rather beefy format and at the same time i would say a pretty large screen 6.5 inches so after having tested the galaxy a52 and a72 let's see what the a32 can offer us the design is pretty straightforward we got a plastic frame and a plastic backside all the colors have the awesome name attached to them there's awesome black awesome white awesome blue and awesome violet this is awesome blue it's a bit glossy but the frame is even glossier in spite of being plastic it's pretty well built that's my feeling uh, and at the same time it does draw a few scratches the backside not many fingerprints but some scratches were already caught on this side so definitely use a case uh, in the meantime, I should probably also mention that um, uh, we're doing fine when it comes to the grip. The phone is pretty grippy, you will not drop it for sure. The aesthetics aren't very pleasing, we got a teardrop notch here and also rather large bezels. Now, as far as ergonomics goes, I'm pretty pleased and even one head usage is a go in my view. Now, uh, the buttons are pretty clicky. That's something I noticed for both the power and the volume button, so you should probably take that into account. As far as the screen is concerned, uh, Samsung did a bit of a compromise here. We're relying on a TFT panel, 6.5 inch, and a resolution of 1600 over 720 pixels. Big bezels, as I said before, teardrop notch and a large chin. Now let's go to the um, playback section and show you this typical test video we employ. Uh, the teardrop notch may be a bit distracting, but you should get accustomed to it. This is the type of screen you should only use indoors. Outdoors it cannot take the sun. It's not very legible in the sunlight. The colors look okay, if not a bit washed out. Uh, they're a bit, uh, I would say, they're a bit too white to infuse with white for my taste. Um, the view angles aren't very generous. The screen gets gray if you tilt it just slightly both vertical and horizontal have that problem so it's best seen from the front and indoors once again the colors may be its best attribute but only if you can accept them being more white-ish the pixels have an rgb stripes arrangement as seen under our microscope and uh, now uh, let's see what else we have here i'm talking about the brightness test we did that and we came pretty unimpressed after it 272 lux units it's towards the bottom of our hierarchy uh, usually we like to see phones going past the 400 mark it goes past the redmi 9c nfc the poco m3 and the moto g50 stays below 400 other phones including the realme 8 5g and the redmi note 9t also not many settings for the display usually samsung offers us offers us some extra tweaks now, as far as the CPU is concerned, I have to admit, I haven't seen this one very often. Uh, even the apps which usually identify it will not properly call it out. AIDA does it. It's MediaTek Dimensity 725G, 7 nanometer sounds good on paper. MediaTek CPU, Octa Core, uh, and uh, it's seen also on the Oppo A53 5G. The phone has a few versions, 4 gigs, 6 gigs or 8 gigs of RAM. We have the one with 4 gigs. Uh, as far as the storage is concerned, you get 64 or 128. We're lucky enough to get the latter. We also have a micro SD card slot. And uh, if you're using the phone on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll find that there's not much lag here. However, there are two instances when lag may appear. One of them happens when you're just booting up the phone you're going to have lag for about 5-10 minutes or when you're performing a large number of updates in the background that's also one time when lag may appear gaming will only be done with medium level details and maybe older games if you want to keep things keep things pretty simple and straightforward as far as the benchmarks are concerned we have them here so let's have a look 
We start off with Antutu 2 8 and as you can see we have 1241k points. I try to compare the phone with other cheap 5G handsets and if not there aren't any 5G ones that compare it to similarly priced devices. We went past the Oppo Reno 4 Lite, Vivo Y70 and the Moto G30. We stayed below the Redmi Note 90 and the OnePlus Nord N10 5G. Uh, this is Antutu 2 8 and then we go to Geekbench 5 multi-core where we just beat the Nokia 8.3 5G, which is a bit of a shocker for me, the Oppo Reno 4 Lite again, and the Moto G30. We stayed below the Realme 8, Galaxy A71, and Realme 8 5G, plus the arch nemesis Redmi Note 90, which is actually possibly cheaper than this phone. If you're wondering, if you're wondering about the graphics, I would say that things are a bit surprising. Uh, there are a bit above expectations, the results here. We surpassed the Realme 8 Pro and Galaxy A72 4G, both, I would say, rather strong devices, so not bad, but we stayed below the Moto G 5G and the Poco X3 NFC. When everything's said and done, this behaves like a mid-range phone, but one of the better ones. It can definitely hold its own versus other cheap 5G devices, but be careful of those two instances of lag I mentioned before. Uh, when it comes to the temperature tests, I would say we're doing fine in benchmarks not higher than 30.2 degrees Celsius, and in video games only 34.5 degrees Celsius, definitely no overheating here. And now let's talk about the battery. Now the handset you're seeing here is I would say rather beefy and it's that because of the 5000 mAh unit inside. This is the battery and it charges at 15 watts, promises on paper to deliver 20 hours of video playback. And guess what? It delivers pretty close to that. In our test uh, it showed 19 hours and 33 minutes of continuous HD video playback which is pretty close to top 20 actually the 25th phone. Uh, it's doing fine in my book it goes past phones like the Moto, Motorola Moto G30, uh, the Motorola Moto G50 and the Redmi Note 10 5G. Stays below the OnePlus Nord Core Edition 5G recently launched and tested and also below the Realme 8 5G. The Realme series is going strong with the uh, usage this year, Realme 8 especially. Now here we are with a continuous usage for the PC Mark test, uh, 13 hours and 44 minutes, still pretty impressive, just a smidge above Moto G30 and Poco M3, beating more relevant phones like the Vivo Y70, Galaxy A41 or the Moto G 5G+. Plus. At the same time it stays below Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite 5G, Redmi Note 90 yet again and Realme 8 5G. The charging is, as you probably expected, to be 20 hours, excuse me, not 20, definitely, never 20, 2 hours and 20 minutes, and after 30 minutes of charging, you're at 27%, so pretty long charging here. Now I think it's time to address other features. If you look at the bottom, you're going to see the audio jack and also the singular speaker here. You will not cover it in landscape, so that's nice to see, and I think it's time to go listen to some music, but not before I can show you the fact that we can do some tuning for the acoustics. So, um, sounds and vibration, sound quality and effects, we got uh, Dolby Atmos and Dolby Atmos for gaming, you got the equalizer here with uh, nine custom channels, there's adapt sound and that's that. Since uh, I'm seeing that the Dolby Atmos is grayed out, I'm guessing it can only be triggered with headphones, just a guess of mine. Okay, so once again, singular speaker at the bottom, and I think it's time to turn on the music, and here we go. Bunch of conclusions, definitely a loudspeaker, for sure. It's also a bit muffled, that's my impression, and also slightly distorted at top volume, drop it to 80% and it's already better. Uh, okay, so it's loud, I'm satisfied with the quality of the human voices, it's a bass heavy speaker, uh, not very kind with high notes, so there's that, the body doesn't vibrate a lot, which is always a good news in my book. When it comes to the volume, uh, I'm pretty impressed by the 89.8 decibels achieved with a typical acoustic test sample. It goes above the Realme 8 5G and the Galaxy A52 5G even, stays below the Motorola Moto G50 and the Re Redmi Note 90. In gaming, uh, we went past 100 decibels, it's actually 100.6 decibels. It's above the Moto G50, Galaxy A52 5G and the Redmi Note 90, stays below the Realme 8 5G and um, Huawei P40 Lite 5G. 
I think this is enough with the acoustics. Let's talk about the camera. So uh, as you can see the teardrop here on the top side, it hosts a 13 megapixel shooter for your selfie needs and with full HD video capture. If you go to the back side, you're treated to a quad combo, which is something nice to see on such a cheap phone. Uh, we got the LED flash here. We have no camera island and no protrusion, which is something new for Samsung. 48 megapixel main shooter, a Samsung sensor, an isocell bright GM, um, f1.8 aperture, face detection autofocus, as I said before, plus an 8 megapixel ultra wide shooter and a 5 megapixel macro shooter plus 2 megapixel bokeh. The good news is that it shoots 4K 30 frames per second video. The main camera combines 4 pixels in one and outputs 12 megapixel shots from its 48 megapixel sensor. It has AR doodle features, pro features, panorama, um, there's a food mode, macro mode, slow mo, hyperlapse, even a night mode and a fun mode. When everything's said and done, it's time to take you straight to the gallery and show you the many pictures I have taken. 192, quite a few of them, so let's discuss them. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. Let's start talking about the selfies. Now, I have to say that the bokeh shots were probably the best I've taken with this phone so far. Uh, they really have a nice way of highlighting your face and cutting it from the background and a very nice way of uh, rendering and showcasing the threads of hair and the clothes. So, uh, bokeh separation of the foreground and background works fine for both the front camera and the back camera. Some pretty nice macros here and there, however, they do take several attempts to get right. Um, I also noticed that in spite of a pretty cloudy day, the green of the vegetation was pretty intense, which makes me worry that on a sunnier day, there will be some serious overexposure and the colors would be too intense. Okay, several more selfies here and very nice close-ups of flowers, no matter the colors, or I should retract that because when it comes to red roses, the color becomes too intense. This is probably the best, best macro I've taken with this camera. A very nice focus on the base of the budding rose. And as I said before, the bokeh with the back camera is just as good as the front camera, so that's where the set of cameras excels. Okay, and uh, one thing I noticed about all of these shots, the objects we capture have a very nice contour to them and they have pretty nice details. Everything is kept in focus and solidly rendered. I'm pretty happy with the colors in general, even though some reds felt like pink and some of the greens were too intense. And also, as I said before, some of the red flowers are misrepresented. The red becomes too intense. Uh, this is one example of, um, let's see here, so regular shot. An ultra wide shot among the 8 megapixel ultra wide cameras on the market. This is one of the good ones. It slightly loses details and may deform the sides, but not in as high a manner as other $200 phones. This is the zoom test uh, at 2x. It's passable, but not better than that. And I also like the texture of the sand you can see here. So, texture, contours, details, and bokeh are the highlights. Uh, the colors may become intense on a sunnier day. Now let's see the low light captures. We have a night mode and we're not afraid to use it. So this is a regular shot and the night mode really lights up everything and makes you see all the architectural details here. So if you look here, you won't see much, but here they really put into the spotlight better. If this is not, the, if this is not a good example, I'm sure this is. So uh, we got this photo here uh, and as you can see, the lights are a bit overblown, but with a night mode, the lights are clearly delimited and contoured and you can really tell more details on this column. Um, I should also say that the low light captures weren't that impressive, but we're still dealing with a $200 phone, so some compromises may appear. And when you're applying the night mode, things become a bit surreal. It's not a very natural vibe. It's as if they're too lit for low light scenarios. Now, this is the photo section. Now, let's talk about the video section. And we don't have many videos, so it will be easy to go uh, between them. So, we have nine videos in total. Um, the good news is that we have 4K video capture. The bad news is that it's not as detailed as the um, Poco X3 NFC and as well as the um, Galaxy A71 from last year, for example. The um, uh, stabilization is, isn't the best in the world. You can feel that when you're walking around and also when you're panning. 
but the colors I would say are pretty decently calibrated even though the intensity of the greens may be a bit too much for one's taste. We also have this video here which actually looks a bit better even though it's only full HD. You can tell that in the background the leaves are lacking detail which the 4K camera, the 4K filming would have shown. So it doesn't hold a candle to the POCO X3 NFC, that's for sure. This is the video, selfie video, I'm pretty underwhelmed by this one. I mean the focus is okay, but what's behind me looks like 480p, not even HD. It's uh, slightly ghostly, too white, I mean the face is okay and all, but not good enough to make a vlogging career. Pretty nice uh, focus in close-ups, close-up videos and nice texture of the rows. Speaking of uh, focus, we have this video here as usual to test the focus. Close up and in the distance, alternating between them with success. And of course, stabilization test is also due, so here we go. Of course, not very impressive results, as you probably expected. There's no optical stabilization here and the electronic one doesn't quite blow my mind. As you can see, the image is flickering and there's also a bit of vibration and trepidation of the scene. Now, these have been daytime videos, this is a low light video, as expected from a $200 phone. There's a lot of noise, the lights are overblown, the colors are too warm, and there's a lot of shakiness. Once again, as expected. Okay, so that pretty much sums everything up, and I think it's time to talk about connectivity. So we're getting an USB-C 2.0 port at the bottom, we also have an audio jack and a microphone here and another microphone on the top side. The phone has Wi-Fi dual band, just so you know, as well as 4G connectivity and Wi-Fi direct. There's Bluetooth 4. Point, excuse me, 5.0 here, GPS and you also have NFC for the contactless payments. The calls are loud and clear and believe it or not, we also have, um, um, well, radio available here. Now aside from that we have a speed test so let's see how that panned out. So we go to the screenshots and these are the results we achieved. When it comes to 4G things got as high as 159 mega per second in download and 67.3 mega per second in upload and on Wi-Fi 310 over 355 in download and upload respectively. I would say they're decent results for what I keep calling this $200 phone. Didn't get to test 5G, didn't get much coverage in my area, but hopefully it will come sooner than later. On the OS and UI front, you already know this if you've seen our reviews for the Galaxy A52, A72, S21 series. It's One UI 3.1 with Android 11 at its core. This means, among others, that we have a minimalistic interface focused on one-hand usage with a lot of transparency and some customization. This is the um, app multitasking section. This is the recent area basically. And you also have the option of split screen and a pop-up view. This is the drop down section which now covers the whole screen with useful stuff like, for example, link to window, screen recorder, quick share, smart view and dark mode. Plus you can add more. In the settings you can find connectivity options, display options, wallpaper, themes, layout, biometrics and security and speaking of which, let's test the fingerprint scanner here embedded into the power button. Now, uh, as you can see, I would say it's reasonably fast, but only if you combine it with the face unlock. The notifications cannot be made discrete like the one you saw before, instead of filling up the top part, we have the privacy area with permission manager, we have digital well-being and we also have this uh, extra set of options. Android Auto, Side Key, One-Handed Mode, you can replace these buttons with swipe gestures, you got a game launcher for gamers, and a dual messenger. Okay, so I think that's about it, not sure if I forgot anything, but if I did, definitely have the text review for that. Uh, you can also see the wallpapers, themes, and widgets here, the widgets are pretty straightforward, lots of transparency and white backgrounds, Android 11 brings a notification history and a split of the chat notifications and regular notifications, plus those chat heads bubbles separate from the uh, rest of the action. Uh, as far as the pre-installed apps are concerned, we've got Spotify and Netflix for video consumption and music consumption, Galaxy Store as your other source of apps aside from the Play Store with some special offers and bundles. There's also the Microsoft section with Office, OneDrive, LinkedIn and Outlook. This is the Google Suite and this is the Samsung folder with voice recorder, internet, smart things, files, 
uh, radio messages and AR zone. Of course, there's also a note taking app and the uh, gaming section where you can keep your games and uh, even do some tweaks. Okay, so when everything said and done, this is, the, uh, this is the end of the review and this is what I was searching for actually, the game launcher. It's here. And you can hold your games here and set up a profile. Okay, so as I said before, it's the end of the review. So it's high time we went here and showed our website. And at the same time, we talked about the verdict for this affordable 5G handset. Now, the pros and cons. On the pro side, it's a comfy phone with a pretty good performance on account of a 7 nanometer CPU. It's got a long battery life as the selling point, a solid single speaker at the bottom side. It's got bass and loudness. Uh, it takes some pretty good bokeh shots for the front and back camera. It's got nice contours for objects captured with the camera. Um, nice close-ups as well, an okay night mode usage for the shots. And uh, at the same time, I would say that Filming in 4K at this price is definitely an advantage. Pretty fast connectivity and One UI 3.1 is definitely something else compared to all the other interfaces on the market. When it comes to the cons, I would say that the backside is pretty scratchy, so you're going to protect it with a case. The brightness is on the poor side if you really want to consume video outdoors. Indoors it should be okay. Um, also the charge is pretty long. The high notes aren't very underwhelming for the bottom speaker. The green hues are intense for photos and videos. Stabilization is, I would say, rather poor in videos and selfies aren't, are pretty inconsistent. Some are good, some are not. And um, sometimes the fingerprint scanner can be a bit slow if it's not used in combo with the uh, face unlock. So in the end, you're going to be buying this phone for the battery alone. Has an excellent battery life and pretty decent performance plus 5G and 4K video capture, that's what's selling the device. The biggest surprise I had here is probably the bokeh, as well as the battery life and the combination of a decent CPU for the mid-range gaming and One UI 3.1 with Android 11 and a promise of quite a few updates. This is it from us. Uh, just so you know, this one competes with the Realme 8 5G, the Redmi Note 9T, the OnePlus Nord Core Edition 5G and the Moto G50, it can defeat the Realme 8 5G and the Redmi Note 90 and also the Moto G50, but the OnePlus Nord Core Edition 5G may be a bit more appealing. It can definitely hold its own even in the camera department with the other three models. This is it from us. Bye bye.